Hello there, this is Will from Stacks for Stacks. The purpose of this video today is to provide a quick introduction to the updated playlist of Stack I'm releasing. Uh, the playlist of Stack was originally a Stack element developed by Stack Maniac. On the 1st of August, I inherited all the Stack Maniac stacks and Rappy Weaver themes. And Playlister is one of the stacks which I've been working on in recent weeks to uh, radically overhaul and update and re-release as version 2. The original Playlister stack was built on a plugin which unfortunately is no longer developed. And this presented a few problems because there were some things in the old Playlister stack which weren't working correctly. And as a result of that, I've taken the time to completely rebuild this stack from the ground up. Um, it's using all my own code. Um, we've got a tiny bit of code we use, um, it's called Modernizer, uh, which we just use for some feature detection. But other than that, um, all the code going into this stack is completely my own. Uh, so there's no danger of this stack suddenly breaking and you know not being able to get updates or whatever for it. Um, it's pretty easy to use. You'll want to have uh, Stacks 3 installed on your computer and Rapid Weaver 6. And like any other stack, uh, you open your Stacks library here on the left hand side. You drag and drop a copy of Playlister 2 into the page. And then when you've got your inspector open on the right hand side here, uh, this is where you can access all the settings. Um, so we'll start with the basic settings. You're presented with a setup mode. By default, uh, you always have stacks enabled, and that's what I've got on the screen in front of me here. And so you just click on the blue plus button at the bottom here, and this will just add a new uh, playlist or track item. And as you can see over here on the right hand side, you then have the options to configure the links, titles, um, albums, artists, any sort of additional information, and the cover artwork as well. The nice thing about this new system in Stack 3, of course, is you've got the option to uh, easily drag and drop to reorder your playlist items. Um, and if at a later date you wanted to come in and add new items or take items out, that's perfectly feasible to do. Um, you don't need to delete the stack and start all over again. And you do have the option of unlimited tracks. There's no uh, limit of tracks you can have in, in the uh, Playlist 2 stack. Uh, so this is pretty simple to get set up and I envisage that this is what a majority of people will be using. Um, but we've also got two other setup modes. Uh, we've got what's called a simple warehouse. So this would be where you provide um, just the link to um, an mp3 directory on your web server. You can see all the instructions presented here on the uh, in edit mode. And you can just set the artwork, image, uh, the album, artists, all that sort of information, and all the tracks will share the same details. Um, but I won't go into too much detail about that one today because there's a lot of information already on the website about this, so you can follow that through if you're interested in uh, setting that up. And again, likewise, the advanced warehouse, all we basically do here is we set the link to a CSV spreadsheet file, and that spreadsheet file contains all the information about your playlist, the links to the mp3 files, titles, artists, um, album names, the, the whole lot and you can configure each one individually. So just going back to the uh, default stacks uh, setup type here on the uh, right hand side. We've got the option to heavily customize the playlist or interface. Uh, you can come in here, you can easily turn settings on and off um, and that will toggle the display of different elements. So for example, I go back and uh, preview our completed player. If asked to enable uh, the shuffle button here, that will display a button here we can shuffle our playlist with. Likewise, there's an optional button here to toggle the playlist open and closed. And you can see I can just do that very quickly and easily. So there's quite a lot of options here to customize what exact um, interface elements are shown on your um, your playlist on your playlist stack. And likewise things like the cover artwork well, we can easily toggle that off if we don't want to display it um, and we can even toggle off the playlist for example. Uh, so now at this point we've just got ourselves a very simple um, audio player that will just play a single track. So it's quite a, a diverse setup, a lot of different features and uh, things that this new stack will support. But for now I'll just uh, re-enable these two settings 
uh, while we continue down the list of available options. We've got the choice of lots of style settings. Again, I won't go into all the detail about what all these do. A lot of them are self-explanatory, and if you roll your mouse cursor over each of the settings, it will display a tooltip explaining what each one does. But you've got control here to adjust just about any aspect of the playlist or stack. You can certainly recolor it and change the styles and all sorts of dimensions and things like that to match your existing Rapid Weaver theme absolutely perfectly. Um, today I'm just using the free blank Rapid Weaver theme available from my website at themeflood.com. But ordinarily you might be using a different Rapid Weaver theme, in which case you can come in here and you can change all the colors to match your um, existing theme or perhaps your corporate branding or something like that. And then we've got the options to customize a playlist as well. And again, quite a few of these settings that emulate what we've seen already with the player style settings. Uh, you can change again the colors, uh, dimension of different elements. And we've also got the options down here to adjust how many columns are displayed um, at different screen widths. So this is actually splitting our uh, playlist here up into multiple columns automatically for us. So you just go ahead and similar to the free um, adaptive grid stack which I provide already, you've got the option to set your own uh, breakpoints. You can do it in sort of M units of measurements or if you find it easier you can use pixels. And you basically set your breakpoints and a breakpoint just defines points at which something should happen. And in that instance, in this instance here I should say, all we're doing is we can adjust how many columns to uh, display on different screen sizes. So for example down here the largest breakpoint which I'm viewing at now um, we can change the column count to say 2 and you can see that just splits our playlist now just down into two columns. Um, you could go for one column, you could set the whole playlist to just one column if you wanted. So for now I'll put this back to three columns again like so. And then the final set of settings to look at are the advanced settings. In here you can change some of the different labels and the buttons if you needed to. Uh, we've got the option to change the error label displayed if a web browser viewing your web page doesn't have support for embedded HTML5 audio. Typically that is very rare. The only browser that possibly might have problems with the playlist or stack would be very old versions of Internet Explorer like IE7 or IE8 but they've not been supported for some considerable time now so the chances of people coming onto your website with those browsers and expecting this to work is pretty slim uh, in my opinion. You've got the option as well to append the player that will basically break the actual player component at the top here off the playlist itself so you can actually move these into different parts of a page so you can actually append the player onto a different divisional container within the page. Um, that could be, you know, for example, you could have the, the playlist in the sidebar of the website, and you could have the player within the main page content container. Um, it's just a few sort of creative options you've got with that. We've got the option to display icons on active items, and we can also adjust things at the bottom here like default volume, animation speeds, uh, we can adjust the maximum width of the playlist stack as well. Uh, so we could create a, a, a playlist stack which is perhaps more um, slimline like this, so it's a, a, it's a mini playlist stack you could say. And um, we've got things like the, uh, the option to turn the button gloss effect on and off. So as you can see, there's a, a lot of uh, time and effort gone into this stack. A lot of new settings have been added and uh, hopefully for, you know, for people updating from previous versions of Playlister uh, you'll find this version a lot more feature rich now. Um, it's taken quite a few weeks to bring this update together, you know, a lot of time and effort has gone into uh, preparing this update but I'm very pleased of how it looks and uh, you know compared to the previous version which is here uh, you can see this had pretty limited features, you know, this, this is the maximum settings you had and uh, the playlist generated is pretty ugly to, you know, to say the least really. So uh, this new one is uh, a lot more attractive to look at, more feature rich, a lot more settings you can come in and change. Um, I should add as well, Playlister 2 is a free update for existing users of the previous Playlister stack. 
um, simply get in contact with me um, with some proof of purchase and we can give you a coupon code which you can use on the website to grab this latest version. Um, the playlister webpage is stacksforstacks.com forward slash playlister and on that page you can find this exact working example of a playlister stack uh, so you have a play around with that. We also provide a free demo version which you can download and store into Rapid Weaver and that will give you the opportunity to fully evaluate the playlister stack before committing to a purchase so you can actually check that it's exactly what you need and it meets all your requirements. So that's all for today. I hope you found this video of use anyway. Should you have any further questions then feel free to let me know. Uh, you can get in contact with me via the Stacks for Stacks website or via Twitter or any other channels you know like that. And I look forward to speaking with you again soon.